the Chinese Communist Party take off its mask via this tweet this week? Look, I think that it was um, incredibly insulting and offensive and it's not really what we expect from, you know, what we presume to be a mature world power. Um, and they are a, a powerful country, but we don't expect people to behave like that. And uh, we, you know, they were obviously, uh, you know, this has been going on for some time. And, of course, Tom, we're not the only country to have these issues. I mean, I think about, you know, Norway and China, their relations. You think about when they awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2010 to a human rights activist in China, Mr Liu, and, of course, he wasn't allowed to attend and, uh, you know, the next day trade talks stopped. China stopped their trade talks with Norway and stopped importing from Norway. So and it's taken them, you know, most of this decade to sort of resume any normalised relations. So I think we're not certainly not the only uh, country to be facing these issues. And I, and I mean, just on a human rights point of view uh, and how, I guess, what is surprising, I think, in a country that might, uh, you know, where one of their citizens is arrested in Canada and they detain two Canadian citizens in China. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, obviously, the other countries have, are having issues as well. So Anthony Albanese has said this week that Kevin Rudd managed the China relationship well and was able, he says, to raise human rights issues with that offence. John Howard managed it well. What's changed since then? I mean, a, a lot of close China watchers mm. would argue the biggest thing that's changed in the past few years is not the behaviour of Australia, but of China. Do you well, agree? I think, well, I think President Xi, uh, you know, assumed the presidency and, of course, has since become... Point, they've changed the rules and he, he will be president for life. So um, I think, you know, he came in in 2012, 2013... Uh, so I think that's changed and he certainly had quite assertive speeches to the People's Congress uh, and I think that that's probably one of the changes. But I also think uh, that we, Australia, you know, we are... You know, I think, you know, and I talk about it and there's an article that Rob Harris has written in The Age and Sydney Morning Herald today about how, you know, we're pretty... We're a good country. You know, we do lots of things well. I'm not saying we're perfect... Um, if we were perfect, we wouldn't have such a discrepancy between Indigenous death rates and uh, other Australians' death, you know, when they're actu the actuarial tables of that. But I think that we are a good country and I don't think we probably talk about it enough. I think that, you know, people in around our region know that. I mean, you think of all the, the work we do with Papua New Guinea, for example, with Indonesia. I think these are important relationships in our region, and I think we're, we're right. good at it. So, so, but this gets me back to who's to blame for the handling or the way the relationship is right now. Again, Anthony Albanese reflected on uh, previous leaders and Scott Morrison and said those leaders didn't offend for offence's sake. Do you believe that's what the Australian government has done, offended for offence's sake? Look, I think... I don't... I, don't really think of it as blame, I don't, about blaming. I think that really... Well, call we, it Australia, responsibility, whatever it is. Well, but... I think that Australia has... Um, you know, I think we've seen this week every Australian, not just in this building in Parliament House, but every Australian was outraged by that tweet. And the Australian Labor Party, the you know, the hint is in the name, supports Australia. It supports our position and, you know, the position of our country... And I think that we have to remember um, that you know, we are having, you know, we are not the only country to have these, these difficulties. And doesn't that indicate then that it's not something the our Australian government has done, but a changed uh, um, approach from China, an aggressive, assertive one on the world stage, a singling out and punishing of countries that talk up too much against it, and that Labor's position should be more about unity and calling out China than saying there's been a mishandling by the Australian government? Well, I think, you know, we've... What we're seeing is, um, I think, Australia trying to be responsible and mature in its relationship and its response back to China. And, in fact, we're seeing reports this morning that, in fact, people from the Chinese embassy are trying to distance them th themselves from that tweet from the foreign ministry spokesperson. 
So we but, yeah, announced so those reports, this morning, perhaps not backing down from it, but not not necessarily saying backing it down, might but not be an official government yes. tweet, even though well, it's come from a foreign ministry spokesperson. So I think they've see. I, I think the part of the problem is, you know, the Chinese embassy has a lot of people here, and I think what they've done in you know that tweet or that list of grievances is actually not really understand the Australian people. Because you look at that list of grievances and you think, well, what should, should we not comment on, you know, human rights abuses anywhere in the world? You know, all of us are made mm. poorer by human rights abuses, but... no matter where they are. And I think that when you look at that list of grievances, I think Australians looked at that and thought, this is actually, what do we give up? Do we give up rule of law? Do we give up a free press, the freedom of association? Well, well exactly. I've got the 14. I've been carrying them with me all the... week. <laughs> So th this goes to the point. The only one Labor seems to be signalling out is here. Call for an international independent inquiry into the COVID-19 virus act as a political manipulation echoing the US attack on China. China is not saying it's because, Maurice Payne said in an in interview, before she had multilateral support, there should be an inquiry. It's just the fact we called for it and, of course, helped get it done. So, so Labor agrees with the policy, but because perhaps we went a little bit early in rhetoric, it's kind of, well, there's well, a bit of blame on both China, sides. China well, voted exactly. for that motion at the World Health Assembly. And I think what we're seeing now is, you know, in this week we've also seen them sort of suggesting that it didn't really start in China, it started in Italy, for example. But, and isn't, and I this think is that clearly... That is a, that, so I thought, you know, is it really, you know, we all understand the origins of it, it was in Wuhan, mm. but... I think we actually do need an inquiry and, that, and I'm glad that that happened at a multilateral fora because everyone supported it. It was unanimously right. supported. Right, so, and that, Australia helped get that done. So is it really helpful for Labor to single out, well, maybe if we just asked for it a nicer way, China wouldn't be targeting us? They would, well, wouldn't they? If we have supported if we, having that inquiry. I understand that, but what Labor has been critical of is the way Maurice Payne did it. Again, talking about that there should be an inquiry before she had the multilateral support. Do you really feel as though if Maurice Payne did everything behind the scenes but Australia was still a key driver of it, that China wouldn't be upset I about think it? That, I think that well, there's been bipartisan, in fact, not just bipartisan, but support from the crossbench as well for having that inquiry. I mean, I talked to the crossbenchers in this, all of the crossbenchers in mm. the Senate, and none of them has said, you know, this is something that the world doesn't need. Not that it doesn't so, need, but the so leadership at Labor has said, on the one hand, inquiry good, the way it was approached bad. Do you agree? Well, I think that we need to... We need the inquiry. I think how it happened, you know, that's how it... The, the way it happened. I think there are other countries who were very quickly on board. You could see it in media commentary and certainly on uh, Twitter feeds from mm. other, um, you know, other countries' official you know, spokespeople. And I think that there was... Um, you know, it was a unanimous decision at the World Health Assembly. So I think we've got an inquiry. I actually you you think... don't sound critical of Maurice Payne for the way well, this happened. I think that we, you know, there was an inquiry, we're going to have it, and I think that that will be good. Okay. And I think that now I... China is, I think, trying to... You know, we want to actually have some factual and scientific right. way you know, forward. There and could I be think... another one. That's right. And, in fact, the study of the coronavirus has actually led, mm. you know, that people have been doing for some years, has now led to one of the early vaccine possibilities. So I think we do need... I, I, do I need want to play that. for our viewers. Um, we did have this week uh, a campaign from many of our um, partners, I suppose, across the world, allies and partners, to do with wine. Um, it was a Je suis Australien moment, perhaps, <laughs> one might call it, uh, because of the tariffs on our wine, all encouraging um, their country people, including Italians and the French, to drink Australian wine. You appeared in it. Let's have a look at uh, how that unfolded. Earlier this month, the Chinese government handed the Australian government a list of 14 grievances demanding that Australia stops voicing out in defence of human rights and the rules-based order. China has cancelled a whole range of Australian imports in an attempt to bully us into abandoning our values. One of the worst affected industries is the Australian wine industry. This isn't just an attack on Australia. It's an attack on free countries everywhere. That's pretty clear. That's your message to Australians and to the world. You're not talking there about Australia mishandling the relationship. You're saying Australia 
is being encouraged to abandon its values. You're not equivocal there, are you? No, and I don't think we should... I don't... I absolutely do not think that we should. I am a very, very strong believer in democracy and the pillars that support a democracy, mm. and I don't think we should resile ever from those pillars. So by those I mean the rule of law, the rights of minorities, um, freedom of association, the freedom of the press, all of the things that make up a democracy. And, you know, Australia is, you know, a young country but actually one of the oldest democracies in the world. And I think that, you know, the, uh, my fellow co-chairs on the Interparliamentary Alliance on China I think have been very disturbed about what's happening here because they see that, you know, this is sort of partly a test case or, you know, a bit of okay. someone I... Um, John Garner has just written a paper called, um, you know, The Canary in the Coal Mine. And I think that we should be... We should not... We should absolutely not compromise our values and the values of a democracy. Uh, are you entirely comfortable with the line Anthony Albanese has taken on China? I think that, you know, I think what Anthony is doing is he is supporting the Australian people and their views... And I support that. That's and a, I think that... And I think that seems that like a long think, way of saying yes. Well, I think... Is I there think anything... That we, that, I mean, his are, lines you know, on the, the, the Australian mishandling, is that the wrong emphasis to have right now look, while I Beijing think, is testing Australia? I think that, um, you know, we have supported... And, in fact, it's just been announced we're going to support the Foreign Relations Bill with no amendments um, when it comes back to the Senate next week. I think we are, we are... We have been absolutely unified in this building, in this parliament, about right. that tweet... Sorry, I'm going to jump in. We're nearly out of time. Um, but your shadow trade minister called the Wolverines Group, of which you are a member, um, I'm not sure how exactly it's defined, but one that speaks out, perhaps, shall we say, about China, she called this group childish. What's your response to that? Look, I'm not going to um, pass commentary on um, my It's a good colleagues. place to do it. She was sitting but in that chair, so you can... Well, what I'm thinking is that, that really the, um, it, was a, it was a bit of an in-joke between Andrew Hasty and I. We, fi we founded a parliamentary group, Friends of Democracy, and that was sort of a... We had a shorthand expression. But do you know what, Tom? That... The publicity, because it did get quite a lot of publicity, that actually caught the attention of British legislators from both sides of the aisle, and they spoke to us about Huawei, because, remember, they were in a process of banning Huawei and they wanted yeah. our views, and that led to the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, the very group that produced that right. line, that video supporting Australian wine. So, you know, sometimes I think that it's done, you know, we all should believe in democracy and I would imagine that everyone in this building would support that group. Kimberly Kitching, thanks for your time. Thank